Jesus, as we see you, as we see your actions, Lord, we just uh, know that your love is not based on an emotion. It's not based just on a feeling that comes and goes. It's, it's, um, it's uh, based on the fact of your action, of your sacrifice, that you did not hang on to your rights, but that you came to this earth, that you live for the well-being of us that you died with our well-being in mind that you rose again to bring us into relationship with the Father Lord God thank you so much thank you Lord for being the one who didn't just tell us about it but that lived it that gave the perfect example of what love is and so Lord God today we open our lives and say place that spirit in us in new measure and in increased ways place it in us so that we can be the replicas and the extenders of that same kind of amazing love and grace into this lost and broken lost and broken world that you love so much we love it too Lord because your heart is growing in us and it's your heart for this world so Lord God there's times where our compassion uh, runs runs out where our emotion is insufficient and Lord we just say that we don't want to live on that template at all that we want to draw from your strength from your power from your purity of heart and purpose that doesn't just see discord removed but that sees the reign of you come where all is in harmony with you Lord Jesus will you bring that day and will you bring that day into each of our realities Lord God to each of our lives pray it in Jesus name pray it in Jesus name amen thank you very much Lord you can be seated it's great to have each of you here each of you here for um, because you are part of our body our family part of what God's doing among us here and and uh, so it's just special, especially when there are um, uh, reasons some to, uh, to uh, not come on a day like today that you came. And so I just trust that the blessing of God will be especially abundant to you. Um, we have been uh, working a while. I've been in conversations for several weeks about what we're going to be featuring a piece of here this morning. And that is that we'll be talking to today about diversity, about cultural diversity, and about this third way that God calls us to live as people who are living with an identity as citizens of the kingdom of God that brings our other ethnicities before him, that doesn't deny them, but that doesn't hold our deepest identities onto those, those as well. Um, in a minute, I'm going to invite several people up here to join me, and we're going to have a conversation. And let me just say, lest I forget it later, that this is the, the prelude of a larger conversation that I'm inviting each of you into. Uh, the people who will be here on the panel today will be leading a half-time interest group class starting on February 25, just a five-week session so don't wait too long to join in, or it'll be done before you get around to it, okay? So, um, we're, so, so it'll start February 25. That's not this Wednesday night, but, but the Wednesday after that, a halftime class on cultural diversity where we'll be uh, presenting around different sub-themes on that and time for listening to one another, interaction, and hearing uh, our stories and thoughts into, into this uh, into this issue that is so uh, polarizing at times in our society and at other times is so rich and beautiful as we come together on it as well. So as you look around and see each of us and as you look and see our flags, these flags along the wall, um, we haven't talked about them for a while, but they're not just there as decoration. They're there as a sign that says either you or your parent has been born in that in, in that region of the world, under that government. And so that's what it's there. So look around. 
If you're here and your flag isn't flying, um, it's because you didn't let us know that you're from that country and we'll get, get uh, your, your flag flying there as well. So what we always do every year uh, is that we have International Sunday, right? And, and that International Sunday, it, it's this, it, it's this uh, uh, celebration of who we are and just the diversities and heritages that we come from. And, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a great day, and rightly so, and should be one of, one of the greatest days on our church calendar. And, uh, and by the way, we're putting it in the end of May or beginning of June this year. We're not connecting it into Easter time as we did last year, okay? Um, but every, every International Sunday afterward, I, I feel like, like there's this lingering question, like there's this great resource that God has placed upon us, and how are we really using it? to serve God's purposes the other 364 days of the year? Is there more that he has? I just feel that there's, I, I've been describing it recently as though we're sitting on this great oil reserve that's in the ground, but, but we don't understand the richness and the wealth that's there. We don't know how to fully tap into it. It's sort of like we have this oil reserve, but the internal combustion engine that runs on gasoline hasn't yet been invented. And, and, and so that that, uh, that uh, mechanism and way that we align ourselves and purpose together to really invest who we are out into the world that says that there's a better way uh, than what the, the divisive debates, you, 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 that w- than, than how the divisive debates usually are. Um, that that's something that God's forming in us. He's calling it forth. And so that's part of what this is about to try to say, let's stir the pot. There's, there's this way of dealing with any sort of differences, race or whatever the differences are, it's just to sort of say, let's let well enough alone. Just kind of take a step back, right? And say, if, it's, if, if it ain't broke, let's, let's, let's not mess with it. Let's not fix it. But instead, we want to take a step into it and just say, Lord, there's a resource here. There's something that you want to be using in a deeper way. For, for the glory of your kingdom. So let's step in. Let's risk who we are in order to become even more of who he's calling us to become. So that's what we want to do a bit this morning. And so I just want to call forth uh, Ismael Martinez and Brittany Benjamin and Akia Rossiter is going to lead us through. I'm going to sit in one of these seats and join this uh, panel, um, and they're going to have a chance to tell you each about themselves. If you're listening to the announcements, I just want to say this. Um, these are the two people who we're asking you to be affirming for, for uh, executive board um, affirmation as, as well. This was going on before we knew that those were our executive board nominees, Okay. And so uh, I just want to say, it just, just, just in case you, you think about that similarity and that strand, that, that this is not connected to that and that's not connected to this other than that we look for people to be our executive board members who, where there's things happening in their lives, where they're uh, active disciples of Jesus. And, uh, and you'll see that coming through and hear that coming through as we talk together today. So I'm joining the panel and you're leading us at the end. I'll be in prayer for us. Amen. (laughs) Amen. And that uh, we get to have this discussion, yes. So here's one of the things that um, we know about CCF is that our, um, as he talked about the flags, but socioeconomically, we are diverse. We're diverse in age and life backgrounds and national origins. And it's a beautiful thing that we express in our everyday lives and in our worship, right, to God. God is forming us as a body and his children daily, and we learn as we grow. And CCF is a safe place to ask questions and to to hear people's thoughts and to be biblically guided. Amen. And so that is the purpose in what we are doing today, some thoughts that were on people's minds. And we're going to start with um, Ismail. Can I start with you? We'll start with Ismail. To introduce himself and just tell us what is God doing, why is it that you, um, your area of interest with this topic
right again. Good morning. Good morning. There it is. Good morning. There you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, again, my name is Ismael Martinez, and um, I've been with CCF for about going on 10 years now. Amen to that. Uh, and this area of, of interest of mine is just so happened that it's part of what I do at work uh, and working with uh, diversity and inclusion and equal employment opportunity and discrimination as such. Uh, and uh, of course, this is an area where uh, many people are broken. And in the world as we know it, uh, there is a process when somebody feels that they've been discriminated against, so they, there is a process to find relief, okay, for the secular world. Uh, and it's a very interesting topic because uh, I wish I can just tell them Jesus love you to everyone out there all the time. And I do in many other ways, though. Uh, and, and so we try to uh, be of a testimony to everyone out there that there is more than just hate. Uh, or try to find some kind of vengeance when somebody feels that something happened to them or something was taken away from them. Okay, so uh, in the area that where we all difference, you know, there are many, so many differences, uh, we value those differences. In the body of Christ, of course, we value those differences. And many times just to uh, uh, send that message it becomes difficult. Okay, so it just so happened, and I have to say, this is why I have a job. <laughs> You know, in the secular world, that is, because people do come with these situations. Nevertheless, uh, there is good news, and the good news is Jesus. Amen? Amen. Uh, so, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, that is. So, uh, uh, this is why, you know, it's an area, of course, that I've been talking with Pastor Glenn uh, for some time, and we wanted to talk a little bit more uh, and talk about the, the different expressions of worship, too you know, from the different cultures, it's very interesting. The more we know about each other, the more we tend to uh, communicate, the more we tend to uh, connect, and that's what we really wanna do. Many times we hold back some uh, things because we don't know, so we wanna open up a space so people uh, find uh, comfort in speaking whatever differences or uh, wherever you feel maybe uncomfortable about. So I, I think uh, we, we have a very unique uh, church where we have so many different cultures, as you see around in the flags. Uh, so we want to open that dialogue. So this is what I do. All right, Ms. Brittany. Um, so justice um, for me has been a huge part of my life. I've always felt a sense of, I don't know, this deep calling to fight for those who I see mistreated or oppressed. And um, growing up as a black female, I... Uh, from high school, college, and on. Um, I was always a part of, um, in high school, I was a, a, a member, a representative from my school that would travel to Houston every year to speak on behalf of our school about issues of diversity, issues of where minority students were um, just facing a lot of adversity, um, trying to be an advocate, trying to be a voice. In college, that translated to me being the president of the Black Student League and you know working with issues with the black community there and how do we have our needs addressed and, and so on and so forth. Um, so when I graduated, my last year of college, as a senior, I was praying. I asked the Lord, I said, God, I don't know what I wanna do, I don't know what you want me to do really with my life, where, which, where should I go? And the Lord pointed me to Isaiah 1, 17, I believe. And the scripture essentially talks about, it's great that you love me and that you have all these great deeds and, you know, you worship me and all of this, but what are you doing to seek justice? What are you doing to defend the cause of the widow and, and um, the, the orphan and, and so on? And so that was kind of like, I don't know, that scripture is kind of like my passion, my drive. Um, so anyways, that, that's 2011. I graduate. I'm thinking I'm, you know, going to head to law school. God's telling me to wait. So I'm, I'm working. Um, and fast forward to, you know, this past fall with the events of Ferguson and all these big headline uh, events that took place um, within the black community of, um, you know, Ferguson, the, the young man, Michael Brown, that was shot, Eric Garner. These things, like, I don't know, it was like I woke up from a slumber. It was literally as though I was reminded of, like, wow, Brittany, you have a sense, you have a purpose in this, like you, you have a role to play, 
and I need you to kind of start seeking me on this. Like, I need you to get back in the game. So I was angry. I, I was really frustrated. I was like, where's the body of Christ in this? Um, how can we be a voice? What can we be doing? How can we be showing God's justice in the midst of these, like, I don't know, crazy events that just seem so, I don't know, evil? Um, and so, yeah, that prompted me to reach out. Um, I, it started really with, I guess, a lot of, it really started with anger. It started with anger, um, and thank God for CCF because I shared that anger <laughs> with Akia. And I was essentially in a place where I, I mean, I was really frustrated on the verge of tears. And I'm like, I feel like we should be doing something and this and this and that. And she basically pointed me in the direction of an organization called MCC, which stands for um, Mennonite Central Community, uh, Com Committee, I want to say. Um, and she said, I think they have some good programs where, you know, they're seeking biblical models of justice. I think it might, you know, align with where you're feeling God calling you. So... It started with that. I, I, I contacted MCC. I'm like, look, this has been on my heart for years. I know how the world deals with justice. In the world, the, the world's justice is not at all what I see in the Bible. I don't see any models. I don't see these principles being executed. Justice is often talked about in punitive terms, where you did something to me, so now you did something to hurt me, so now let me hurt you or take something from you. Let me put you in jail. Let me take away your money. Let me remove you from your family. And that didn't add up with what I knew of the word of God. And so in my head, I'm like, okay, God, you've called us to have, you know, we have your heart, we have your power. How can we demonstrate this? So that's, in a nutshell, the conversations I've been having with Bishop for months about what it, how do I find my place in this, so. So you already brought up the issue of hurt and wrong and injustice and that type of thing. Um, let's talk about how, the, how we do deal with it. Um, Ismail, your view of what you deal with on a daily basis, but get into more about how we deal with these things that are very natural to us as humans, right? Or is um, it not? Absolutely. Um, uh, this is something that... Uh, um, there, there's intentional motives and there's unintentional motives, what we sometimes call unconscious bias. Uh, and many times we do things unconsciously. Uh, and this is just based on, uh, of course, our experiences, our beliefs, our values, and how we grew up. Okay, the things that we learn even growing up, the places of our country or the places within the United States where we grew up. So we bring all that together. Okay, and then uh, we come to a workplace, for example, or come to a congregation. Let's talk about here. You know, we bring all these experiences together. So everyone's experience is, is real to them. Okay, and, it, and it's the best experience they have. It's their experience. So the minute we kind of try to change that, uh, it becomes a problem. Of course, now you are, you know, uh, trying to, to, to change who I really am, our identity, as we know it. Uh, but when, the point is, but when, we, when we come to the body of Christ, we stop being us. And we begin to be something else. And that's hard to, uh, to let go. So this unconscious bias, many times, because it's, uh, it's, it's unconscious, we don't know whether it's real or not, but we really hope that in the body of Christ that we can give some of that up. Okay, and we can surrender that, that hurt, okay, and find forgiveness in it. Uh, easier said than done. Probably someone is thinking out there. Okay, it's, uh, absolutely, it is easier said than done. That's and true. That, and that's, that's essentially where I was. I was at a place of hurt. I mean, even though this didn't happen to me, it felt like it happened to my brother. Um, so I was hurt. Um, but thank God for the body of Christ. And I think we kind of have to get out of this whole... I'm dealing with my pain and it's mine and I really don't want to give it up because that's really a part of my story and that's just who I am. And it becomes so ingrained in us that it, it, it simmers and it becomes entrenched in who we are. And I think the unique place about um, CCF and other places where, you know, you have a community of, of believers is that we can bear one another's burdens. That means I'm struggling with something and I may not have the answer to it, but my sister over here like maybe connected with someone that can tell me, hey, this is what you need to do. And we have to be careful, I think, about who we share these things to um, because sometimes when you can just fan the flame, I guess, of 
the anger or the hurt, and you can end up just wallowing. Um, but I just think this is a safe space. Um, and just speaking my own personal circumstance, I was able to see firsthand how that hurt, the anger, was able to be transformed into, like, actual action and further understanding of, like, okay, what is God's heart on this? Um, so, I, I mean, I think that with, with issues of hurt, we have to be willing to give it up, in a sense, to, like, give up the ownership. Because I think sometimes we, I don't know, we feel like it's our right to hang on to it. And I'm not saying that it just makes everything go away and it's easy, but it's about walking with someone else, walking in community. Um, and I think that that's kind of the first, for, at least for me, it was one of the first steps that led to me finding a pathway to healing where I can begin to kind of at least unpack, okay, this is an unconscious bias that I've grown up with, you know, where I may have felt this way about a particular race or a particular group of people. Um, it's, it's bringing certain things to light. And I think that's what God calls us to do, right? He does not want us to walk in darkness and to be confused about what this pain we're dealing with. He, he brings it to light. So as you're in community or as you're just seeking him, he will put his light to expose okay, what you're dealing with right now, like you are identifying this person, you know, I'm thinking about in, in my situation, you may be attacking, you know, this brother, this sister right here, because you're, you're thinking of a systematic issue of racism. And so you may be looking at Caleb or whomever and saying, okay, but you're just a white guy saying X, Y, and Z to me. And so I mean, I'm just saying that to say God brings those things to light. They need to come to light because each one of us carries those things. Each one of us carries those prejudices. Each one of us carries hurt, whether it's something that your mother may have told you growing up, that these types of people are like this. And you've always just kind of kept it in the back of your head. And because you want to be polite, you're, you're not going to say that to anyone. But I think it's, it's only when we start to kind of get a little more transparent, which obviously can only happen through real relationship. Um, so... And the basic relationship is a relationship with Jesus. This yes. is really the story of, of the gospel. Yes. And so it's this thing of, as, as, as you've been saying, of am I ready to let go of my story? Because it's like, if I let go of it, does that mean that it will vanish? And, and I'll no longer know who I am because I've been defining myself out of these negative experiences that have been happening to me. But it doesn't. Jesus writes a new chapter for the story. And it becomes a story of how he takes what's broken and takes the oppression and redeems it and does something new with it so that what the enemy intended for bad, the Spirit of God can begin to use for good. But the first start, whether it's, I mean, we're especially applying it into race this morning, but it happens with any kind of, of uh, brokenness and abuse or things like that. As we let go and say, I don't want to any longer work out of the anger and the pain out of that energy, Jesus, be that vacuum cleaner that suctions that out, uh, but instead place it then within me, the power of your resurrection, which is even a stronger power, yeah. and gives me more to, to work at this on in a, in a redemptive way. Um, one of the things that I... Uh, one of the things... Is that me? Okay, here we go. Yeah, one of the things that I that I uh, experienced in my career is that everyone that comes with pain, they want, of course, this revenge. You know, uh, if, for whatever reason, and revenge specifically against a person. So, if something was taken away from them, let's give them that back. But that's not good enough. What about the person? I want the person to suffer. I want the person to something to happen to that person too, because that person hurt me. Um, it becomes very, very, very difficult. Uh, to uh, to counsel something like this uh, when they don't want to let go because there is this satisfaction that if somebody gets hurt too, uh, it's okay. So uh, it, it takes me back to Galatians 5, you know. Uh, let's look at the fruit of the Spirit. You know, it's a, it's a good measurement uh, for us to look into ourselves whether this, as a Christian, uh, is, is this the fruit of the Spirit uh, is it going, is, is, it, is it humble? Is, it, is there humility in there? Is there self-control? Is there love in there? Uh, and many times when you kind of compare that, you find that, oh, it's right on your face. It's not. So that's a checkpoint for all of us. 
okay? And we all go through it. Uh, we all have prejudice. There's something that we don't like, okay? Uh, but it becomes discrimination. It becomes very hurtful when you act on, on that. So whatever you have inside of you, that's something that we really need to bring up to Jesus. And Jesus will redeem that from us, for, for us. And he will take care of this. So the secret to all this is forgiveness. It's a hard thing to do. But to find that, that surrendering place. Uh, I love Brittany's story in, in the sense that she, she, was, she was mad. We need to talk about these things. I don't know how many of you were probably mad out there and for, uh, and for other reasons. We need to find a space. Uh, and I think here we are uniquely positioned that we have a space for you to speak about some of these hurt. Let's talk about it. Okay? Let's, let's, find, let's find that redemptive power that only Jesus gives. Okay, so we can find another way moving forward. and We can begin to love one another the way Jesus asked us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, the only thing I was going to add to that, um, I think something you said made me think of this, but um, I think that specifically when we talk about issues of race, everyone kind of has the standpoint of like, oh, I want you to understand my background. Like, this is who I am, and this is my story. Um, you know, this is my pain. And I think, I think we as believers, um, if we're talking about us as the body of Christ, we do have to understand that while our pain is important and it is, whether it's perceived or it is actual hurt, if you believe that you are a victim, then it is important for that to be brought out and, you know, to be brought before the Lord. But at the same time, we have to recognize that every single one of us, like regardless of whether or not your victimization was rape versus I was just talked to wrongly as a child and that may have skewed my mind or what have you. We, we tend to categorize these things and we say, well, my, my issues were greater or my, my, my past was, was more entrenched with evil than yours was. And so we kind of have that comparison but as believers, going back to what I said originally, we are called to bear one another's burdens. That means that when I'm talking to you, I'm not first looking for you to understand me, but I'm first looking to understand you. I'm first looking to find out, okay, how is it that, what has gone on with you? How is it that I can maybe be of support or how can I maybe provide encouragement? Um, so sometimes that me first mentality, which I think in our culture, we're kind of like, I have my issues. I have my issues. Listen to me. Listen to me. Um, it, it's kind of a little backwards in the kingdom, I think. Um, but, yeah, I think you asked something about her. That's <laughs> good. Um, and so both of you have brought up my story and my experience and my issue. I don't think you're saying, because Bishop touched on this, that my experience is not important, right? You plainly said that my experience is important. Is important. How do we hear, work toward, share, how do we bear that burden? How do we gather? What is God expecting to do? He brought all of us into this room together in our own experiences. If there's 100 people in here, 200 people in here right now, 200 different experiences. Um, can we talk about, you know, what, why did he do that? What is that for? And then also somewhere in here, let's touch on um, this idea that, okay, well, if I can't fight, you might not be saying this, if I can't fight, um, does that mean that I just completely surrender and I do nothing? What is the difference between peace and God's shalom? Let's get into that a little bit. Sorry, it was a lot. <laughs> What's the first part? I, I got caught up with the shalom. Two, piece, I know, but, I know. But that's not where you started. 200 experiences brought to the table. Yeah. What is that yeah. about? Yeah. So let, let me just start it off here. If I'm sharing my story, okay, I want to share this with you, Brittany, okay? Now, am I in complete control of it any, any, anymore? Mm -hmm. So the one thing is, is that in that vulnerability of sharing and bringing it out, what, 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 what has been a very personal and private piece of me, I'm risking, I'm trusting to say, I'm going to bring this out so that it can belong to all of us. And so if I'm sharing, I'm then allowing others to partake of that story as well, which is to provide comment on it. If, if, if I'm not open to comment on it, then I should be holding it to, to myself, I think. Uh, but the encouragement is to be sharing it and then also to be sharing in the spirit that you've been talking about 
where, yes, we are ready to receive and take on, and that none of us are saying that my experience is the right experience, that it's the only experience, but that we're saying, uh, let's be con contributing this in. You, you guys pick up. Yeah, and I think, um, again, going back, and I, I think it's just, it's, I keep going back, as believers, as believers, but I'm harping on that point because there is such transformative power, not just in me saying this or these words, but like in what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So that means, and this is like, for me, it's like a big aha moment. It's everything for me. It means that my highest identifier, my highest identity is not that I was, you know, abused as a child. It's not that I am a black woman raised by a single mom or, you know, it's not that I was a living below the poverty line. But because I now become, once I, once I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, once I decide to follow after him, he becomes my father and he becomes like my identity. We're, it says in the Bible that we're clothed in his righteousness. We take on his name, his image. Well, what does that look like in the midst of, you know, having this baggage? Because we all come to the cross. We all come to God with everything that we are, our race, our background, and all of that. But... What does that look like, I think? And that's, this is something I'm still working on, and I'm still trying to push into this and, and ask for more revelation and more understanding. But my highest identifier is a child, a, a, specifically a daughter of Jesus Christ. So that means that I have to be willing to examine every single thing I'm holding on to, whether it's I'm holding on to my pain, I'm holding on to my preferences, you know, the way I like to do things, the way I like to talk to people, the way people like to talk to me, whatever, all those different things. I'm holding on to those things. I have to be, be willing to examine them under the identity that Jesus Christ has now given me, this new identity. How does this flow into that? And I don't think there's any one right answer because each of us, because of our different expressions, because of the different gifts that we all have, God is able to birth through and, and do these different creative things with us so that it, it becomes like beautiful and it becomes this I don't know this big tapestry of all these different pieces because we're not all the same um, so I just say that to say that whatever we feel like our background is um, whatever that identifier is that we're holding on to is this is who I am if I was to describe who I am if it is not at all if it is not brun brought under the subjection and the lordship of Jesus Christ meaning examine those things that you may think okay this is the way my people this is the way we do things. If there's any area in that, that cultural identity that goes against the word of God or kind of seems a conflict with what, how he tells you you should deal with people, it's probably something we should be willing to let go. And if we're not willing to let it go, then that is a signal and that's a sign that that's an idol. That's something that we are worshiping above Jesus Christ because that, first and foremost, that is, that is our identity. Amen. That's good, huh? Okay. I think I, I really believe that one of the first steps that we should take uh, in moving forward and, be, and beginning to heal is to be willing. You, you have to be willing to, to get into the uncomfort, okay? But then again, at the same time, trust. Trust in the Lord, okay, that things will be okay. I'd like to read a passage here real quick, if I may, in Colossians 3, uh, 312. It says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender heart mercy, tender hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's fault and forgive one another or forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forget, uh, forgive others. All above, clothe yourself with love, which binds all, um, with, which bind us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So uh, with that said, I have to say that you have to be obedient to the word. This is the word of God now. Uh, so if you choose to do different, so we need to examine ourselves. Where are we? What are our motives? Now, God knows our motives. So no matter what we say, we try to make it look, sound nice. He knows our motives. Okay, and, and again, examine ourselves on what, what is it that we really, 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 really want. So am I loving my brother and my sister? It's a question to ask. Okay, we are going to have hurts, but I think there is, there is healing. 
in all this. Coming together, talking about it, finding Jesus, just give, it, give him the authority to be the lordship of your heart. Okay, the lord of your heart, of your life. Okay, and let him be the idol, not anything else. Amen? So how do we see healing happen beyond our own personal healing? Sort of, is, is there any hope for healing out in the sort of the systemic issues of oppression and injustice and things like that? Uh, and and the, yes, there is. Thank you for asking, Glenn. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, but that's where God's concept of shalom comes, comes, comes in. Uh, one of your specific questions, Akia, was, was uh, uh, do we seek justice? Mm-hmm. And uh, my mind went to uh, Micah 6, 8, which is a verse that says, do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with, with your God. And so there's, there's, there's this, not that I'm out there trying to find it, but that I begin to embody it and, and, and do it in my realm, in my spheres of influence. Lord God, let me act justly to the people around me. The, the, the verse that talks about seeking is, is to seek shalom. Uh, seek seek this, this, uh, sh- this shalom, which is, which is God's health and wholeness into every aspect of relationship. And so it's a two-way street. It, it has this concept of covenant with it that is, is that I'm not only concerned about my health and my healing and wholeness, but I'm concerned about yours as well. And that that's what begins to bring the healing of God and the kingdom of God into the larger society around us. And that's, um, that's one of the things that I've been looking at. I've been looking at this model called restorative justice, um, which is when I was talked earlier about the MCC, that was one of their, that's one of their main programs that they implement in different areas around the world. And it is based on that principle of justice Justice cannot be defined apart from God. The world, that whole notion of tit-for-tat type thing, that's not justice at all. Um, That's more so retribution and um, so on. But uh, looking at what God desires, um, in the Bible, this was kind of fascinating to me, but justice is, I believe, synonymous with righteousness. Um, it's it's kind of used interchangeably. Suppose well, I'm not a biblical scholar, so I could be wrong. So look this up for yourselves. <laughs> but what I saw was that in the Old Testament, justice was also used in the Hebrew as the same word for righteousness, and the same thing in the Greek. Um, so to God, right? God invented justice, and how it started was with us and our issues, because God is a God of justice. He sent his son. That was like the ultimate act because we obviously, because of our sin, we could not get back in connection with him. Um, And so anyways, looking back at that model of, okay, what what he did, he sent his son, mercy, grace, all of that. I keep seeing, I, I keep, the more I'm exploring this, the more I'm seeing that God's justice is involving the mercy, the grace, the reaching out the hand, even though I've been hurt type thing. Um, so that's something that I've been exploring with restorative justice. I'm still looking to find out actual models in terms of what has happened on long periods of time. But from what I've seen, from what I am seeing, it seems to be having some success. Um, but it is a lot different than the legal system, the legal justice system. Um, so here is just some closing thoughts though this is not closing because as we said there's this five-week course that is happening during halftime so you can continue on to talk about these topics and ask questions and study the bible and see what god's will and heart is and and be in this all together um but this is what was really on my heart to 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 just share with you all is that in the church we're all children of god right so everything that we talk about um it's really great when we're here in this building together, right? But then we go out into this world and we have to walk it out or we have to to practically put Jesus into our situations and into our our hurts, into our emotions, into our understanding. If you haven't been hurt but your friend has, how do you deal with that, you know? And, And two scriptures that came to mind were Romans 12, one through two, right? I beseech ye, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a holy sacrifice, Right. And it goes on and on. And then we have um, John 17, 14, 
uh, 17, 14 through 15, which talks about being in this world, but not of this world. You know, and these are things that we wake up daily and we have to not only remember, but we have to go to this table that Jesus has set for us, put everything on it, and then ask him what he wants us to walk away with, right? What do you want us to walk away with, Jesus? I put it all before you. And as I walk out my door, what do I pick up and what do I use for your glory? And so this is what these conversations are about. So that we as disciples of Jesus Christ can begin to learn what that is, what that looks like, what his heart is. And that we not just take on everything that is given to us from our families to our, from way back when until our workplace, whatever, whether it be, you, I heard abuse. We're talking about diversity, but it can be anything. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Ismail? You deal with any and everything in what your gender. Yes. yes. Right? All of it. So, um. We're just, we're, that, I just want you to know that this is the topic, and um, can we go over some of the sessions real quick? Five sessions. Um, we will talk about background and connection of cultural diversity here at CCF, concepts and definitions dealing with what diversity is, what bias is, what privilege is, what culture is, what justice is. We'll deal with race, racism in America, EEO examples, more on um, unconscious bias, cross-cultural communications, and so much more. This is the perfect seed ground for God to do what he wants to do here in our nation, here in our church, here in our families. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we're going to do that all thoroughly and completely in five quick sessions, know, right? right? Yeah. yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So please join in for that. We want to conclude this morning by coming to the one table of the Lord Jesus and to share in communion together. That uh, here we come from whatever our walk of life, whatever our experience, and we uh, share in this uh, broken body and, sh and shed blood of Jesus who took on all of our sins and affirmities, who took on all of the injustice that was done against us. And Carol, if you could get your team to come and prepare the elements here. Um, and, so, and so here it is, and this is what uh, Brittany was saying about our highest identifier, that this is what unites us to, together, that, that, uh, that uh, Jesus Christ uh, came to save sinners of whom I am the chief, and that each of us uh, has enough of sin to put Jesus on the cross, and that then in Jesus he comes and he soaks up that sin upon himself and gives us of his righteousness, and he places his tag of justice upon us because of the work that Jesus did. And so together then we unite in this in this uh, broken body of Jesus, in this wounded healerness of Jesus, to extend that compassion, grace, and mercy out into, out into the world. And in this body of Christ that doesn't show any difference, there's no respecter of persons, of, um, of uh, race, of gender, of, of uh, ethnicity of origin, of age, of anything like that, that we all are in need of this wonderful grace of Jesus. So hear this scripture this morning. All of you should be of one mind. This is from 1 Peter 3. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. This is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. For the scripture says, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord turns, but the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. Now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, as Jesus did, right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if somebody asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, They'll be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. So will you stand with me as we take hold of the elements today?
And Lord God, we just place ourselves before you. The broken body, Lord Jesus, which you endured all of the injustice of the whole world upon yourself. And you absorbed it upon yourself. And so, Lord, as you said, by your command, we take and we eat. And we identify with that suffering because out of that suffering comes your redemption. And Jesus, it's your blood that purifies us from every sin. It doesn't just add another color that obscures what happened, but it cleans it. It cleanses us and washes us and makes us clean and it removes the stain. Jesus, thank you that your blood, one type, one color, is the ultimate one size fits all. Jesus. And so we take hold of your blood as we drink this morning. Lord God, as the bread, as the grains of wheat have to be crushed, as me not a gentle Savior.